Hi, and welcome to the Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast presented by Wolf Precision Incorporated, where we learn about and share long range shooting and custom rifle building. I am your host, Jamie Dotson, and welcome to the show. Hi, and welcome to episode 18 of Wolf Precision's Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast, and thank you for joining us. In this episode, we're going to be going to more detail about how we get dope for a rifle and some ideas to pass along to you to get this right. Uh, this is a big problem. It's it's a problem really just, just plaguing everybody, and there's a lot of good information on the internet. There's a lot of bad information on the internet and it's really hard to distinguish between the two. So we're just going to throw our hat in the ring and try to share with you some things to try to help you get really good working dope for your rifle. So without further ado, here we go. All right. So thank you for joining us again. This is episode 18. We're glad to be here. Uh, Our shooting schools are going full force. We have two classes almost back to back this week. But this is one subject that I'm really, really excited to talk to you about, and one I think that's actually starting to make some headway. So we've been shooting long range for, I mean, a really, really long time. I mean, not me personally, but just generally speaking as shooters, whether, you know, military, law enforcement, you know, hunters, so on and so forth. This isn't new. However, though, I I really do think when it comes to getting working dope for your rifle that this is one area that's still suffering. There's a lot of good information, misinformation, and bad information out there. And a lot of people have their own ideas behind what they're doing. Uh, Say, for example, there's different programs out there that that are selling the applications and selling you the information using their proprietary programs. And then you've got free programs out there like, for example, Hornady Fordoff and their standard program. Um, You've got wind meters like Kestrel now that have ballistic programs into them. You've got almost what would be almost considered military grade, you know, ballistics programs or computers that you can take to the field. It's not that there's a lack of equipment to use. It really is just a lack of everybody being on the same page and sharing information to really get this finally worked out on how to do it right. So I'm going to share with you some things that we've done in the past that that I personally have had success with. And I'm only sharing this with you, not saying that I am right and everybody else is wrong or that anybody else is wrong, really. It's just that we've had a chance to do this and verify and shoot again and verify and shoot again. So it's it's a system that works for us, for me personally. Um, I've had some great success with it. And so I just want to pass along to you food for thought and some ideas. So we've made some pretty big leaps and bounds forward when it comes to getting DOPE for your rifle. And DOPE stands for Data Previous Engagements. One system I'm really anxious to look at, I think might be a little bit of a game changer, is the new Oler 89. The Oler 89. So Oler's been around for a long time doing ballistic programs and calculating dope. You've got radar now being used by companies like Hornady. And so they're learning so much about trajectory. Like I was speaking with some of the guys from Hornady in the 2018 SHOT Show, and they said they learned more in about two years than they learned in many, many years before that once they got the the Doppler radar in place. The information that they can get downrange now is just unbelievable, and it's just because the technology now really allows us to do that. So you've got Hornady that really introduced this Fordoff program that has a little slide rule that allows you uh, what they call the coaxial form factor or something like that that it's a it's a drag curve so or a drag bar. You can sort of bend the bell curve of the arc of your bullet to to get it your dope to say what you actually needed in the field. I think that was a big step forward. Uh, the new eighty nine system from Oler, I have not seen it. I've only talked to the techs. We are really hoping to get one here. It looks like they've got their finger on it really good. I think what they're trying to do, and I, I maybe we should bring them on the podcast and really ask them some some questions and i think we'll do that after we get this system here and get a chance to run it or if we get a chance to go down and see it at their facility and shoot over it but what they're saying is is they're basically with this system it's it's a smaller version of what they what they use for you know the military versions of of all the information that they try to gather for for clients in the field and what they're saying is it chronographs the speed of the rifle and then there is microphones that that capture the bullet at the target 
and then it trues the ballistic coefficients yeah, by how long it took the bullet to get there, the speed that it was traveling, and the delay from the time it left your barrel until it actually hit the target. They're saying that, that they can get it, and I, I, I talked to them a little bit yesterday, and I didn't get a lot of great information from the gentleman I spoke with yesterday, but it was something along the lines of, you know, they're saying that they can get within a meter at 2,000 yards on first round uh, using their ballistic software program. And once they get this information down pat uh, inside the program itself. So I thought that was really fascinating. That's that's not too bad. I mean, at 2,000 yards, uh, just your you know density altitude and barometric pressure and other things can, can have just as much an effect. So that's, that's not too bad. For those of us that, you know, don't have access to this type of stuff, I am going to share with you how we've true our dope in the past or how we, we got our true dope out of previous engagements for a rifle. And I just want to share it with you. It's, it's not really an instructional part of it. It's just I want to get you an idea on how we do it so you can throw it into the hat. And if you wanted to try it, if it helps you, great. What we've done in the past, uh, because there wasn't all of these great programs uh, that are out there, and I, I'm going to say this, you know, being honest, that I don't like a lot of them. I think a lot of them have a lot of issues, and I think some of them are absolutely wrong. I, I really believe that, and I've watched enough rounds get down range with people using these different programs that have been playing with them for years and still can't get first round hits or second round hits, and on a daily basis, they're all over the place. So. I'm going to say that and maybe even get some flack for it, but, you know, dope isn't something that you get out of your equipment. It's something that you already have, and you're just modifying it to the atmospheric conditions. So what we've done in the past is we're trying to true the bell curve to the, the, the – basically to the rifle. And there's a couple issues that get involved with your dope. We've talked about the curvature of the bore, and that has a small effect on it for sure. But what we do is, A, you got to make sure that your rifle is broken in. When you get a brand new rifle, you got to shoot it, you know, 150, 200 rounds, get some rounds through it, get your load worked up if you're doing reloads, but get the rifle broken in. The reason you have to do that before you do all the work getting your dope for your rifle is you're usually going to pick up a lot of speed. It's really common for us when we build a custom rifle. I ask the students or customers now that, that have purchased rifles when they Get a rifle on the line, and if they chronograph it when it's new, please chronograph it after 100, 200 rounds and let me know what kind of speed you picked up. And on average, it's probably anywhere from 50 to sometimes as much as 100 feet per second once that barrel breaks in. That's really important to know because if you do all your dope work early and you picked up 100 feet per second in velocity because your barrel broke in, you're going to have a lot of misses at distance and probably drive yourself crazy in the process. So we don't want that to happen. Get the rifle broke in. The other part is you have to make sure that you have a solid 100 yard zero. You, you can't be guessing on this one. You have to have a good 100 yard zero. That's sort of how I like to do it. And then I'm going to get two reference points. I'm going to try to shoot a target at 500 and 1,000 or 500 and 700. Basically, I need two different distances at distance. You can't do this at two and 300 yards. You have to have some extended range. But you could do this at, let's just say you had a 700 yard range. You could do it at 500 and 700, have two targets up. If you had a 600-yard range, I guess you could do three and six, but I really would like that further information to be out at seven, eight, nine, even a 1,000 yards. If you can get that information that far, it helps you, the shooter. So you have two reference points. And what we're going to try to do is we're going we're gonna to go into like Hornady's program, whether it's their Ford Off or even their standard. By the way, their standard program works great. I mean, it, it'll keep you on target or at least close, and then we just modify it from there. So here's what we do. We're going to go in there. We're going to get all the information. We're going to put in all the information it's asking for, our, our chronograph, speed, scope, height, you know, off the off the board, the center of the board of the barrel, you know, whether we're shooting minutes or mils, the ballistic coefficient, the bullet, bullet weight, so on, our altitude or density altitude where we're at, and we're going to print out a starter chart, and we're going to take that starter chart. We're going to make sure we have a good, solid 100-yard zero, and we're going to have two pieces of paper up, whether it's 500 and 1,000, 400 and 700, but it has to be two distances. And then you're going to dial what the paper says, and you're going to shoot the best groups of your life, five-shot group. Then you're going to go down, and you're going to measure high or low at 500 and 700 or 500 and 1,000, whichever target you're shooting, and you're going to do a measurement, and you're going to say, okay, we're just going to say, for example, we're shooting 500 yards and 1,000 yards. We're trying to true the bell curve 
of our flight to the rifle. Really simple to do. You're going to write down the number, right? You're going to say, okay, at 500 yards, I was five inches high, and at 1,000 yards, I was 10 inches high. Well, five inches at, at 500 yards is a minute, right? You're a minute high. At 1,000 yards, 10 inches, you're a minute high. So you need to go into the program and start playing with it until it says what you need, not what it thought you needed. So you're going to go in and play with the program with all the same information. The only thing you're going to do is you're going to change a handful of things, and I'm going to share with you this list right now. Make sure that you write either the density altitude where it says altitude or barometric pressure. Make sure which one the program is based off of. So when you go to the range and do this test, make sure you have a Kestrel with you that can give you a true barometric pressure and density altitude. Put that in the program first. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to modify the scope height ever so slightly, slightly. So let's just say your scope height's 1.95. You could lower it or raise it 1.85, 1.65, something like that. And you're going to hit calculate this whole time. And you're going to look at your 500 and 1,000 yard reference points on that click chart. And you're going to say, am I getting closer to what my rifle actually needs or am I moving further away? And in this case, let's just say you're moving further away. So we want your dope at, let's just say, for example, at 500 yards, you really do need nine minutes. And at 1,000 yards, you need 28 minutes or something like that. You're basically going in and changing these numbers in the program, trying to get it to say nine and 28. Let's just say we started taking scope height out and it started moving us further away from that nine minute mark at 500 yards on that sheet of paper. So we're going to go the other way. We're going to make it 2.05 and we're going to hit calculate. We're getting closer. We're going to hit 2.10 and we're going to hit calculate. We're going to get a little bit closer and we're watching a reference point at 500 and 1,000. We're trying to get those to say what we really need. You can edge with that ever so slightly. Don't get crazy and put you know, a five inch scope height. That's, that's not what we're doing here. We're just basically starting out moving that scope height up and down ever so slightly. And some of that's to compensate for the curvature of the board and the effects that it could be having at distance as well. I start there. This is what I do. The next thing that I do, if I'm not quite there yet, is I start playing with the ballistic coefficient. And this is what Oler is saying, that they're truing the ballistic coefficient to the rifle. That is the key to getting great dope. And so at this point, You know, we said, okay, hey, we were high, we were low, whatever, five inches at 500 yards, 10 inches at 1,000. So now we're going to start manipulating the ballistic coefficient of that bullet inside Horn of the Standard Program, for example. And that's going to start changing our point of impact at 500 and 1,000. And you're going to keep playing with that until you get those two reference points in line. Once you have that in line, you have to save that page and print it. That is your dope for your rifle. You can make a little Excel spreadsheet and have two columns, your dope and your wind, and just have it tied to this, the bell of your scope, you know, just little two little reference cards to have your dope out to 1,200 yards on your gun. And then you're just going to modify that as the, as the conditions change, as the density altitude goes up or down or the barometric pressure goes up and down. You're going to change your dope ever so slightly to modify that. And here's where you could use a program like the Kestrel And you could go in there and log in and put the current data information and use your 1,000-yard dope as your reference point. Well, today, you know, our density altitude or barometric pressure has fell, you know, our density altitude fell 2,000 feet. So I need to add or I need to subtract, you know, this from my 1,000-yard dope and then just run with it for the rest of the day. But you could use that, that program as like sort of a backup, you know, to say, okay, the barometric pressure has fell, the density altitude has fell, I, I now am required an extra minute or two or, or one or two tenths at a, at a thousand yards because of the barometric pressure. So now I know I need two tenths at a thousand and, and one tenth at, at 500. And then I can just run my dope for the rest of the day unless the barometric pressure changes throughout the course of the day. The, the point of the, the process here is it's not a complicated thing to do. It just takes a little bit of time and patience with a broken in rifle, it takes a little bit of effort with that rifle in the field. But once you have your dope for your rifle, unless you change your boy, your load, you know, any of that changes, your dope should stay pretty stable for a long time. I mean, you get a new lot of powder, of course, you could chronograph it. And if you picked up 20 feet per second, change it. But your same bullet, you're shooting the same bullet, same rifle, same, you know, case, rifle case, all of this good stuff. Really simple. Go in and modify, you know, the, the scope height ever so slightly first and try to get your click chart to say what you really did need at the field. 
you're cheating the program. And then you're going to go on and change the ballistic coefficient. Now, if you've got a really bad curvature of the bore where you're artificially starting your bore really, you know, up down, you've got this, your click chart is saying one thing, but you need really something else. I mean, it's really off. You can modify the bullet speed. And I say this carefully. It's the third thing and last thing that I'll do. If, if I can't get my click chart to line up with my real dope, just adjusting the scope height ever so slightly and the ballistic coefficient ever so slightly, then I'll move on and start playing with the bullet speed. But that's the last thing that I do. So for example, uh, you're shooting a bullet that has a BC of 0.5 and you've already lowered it to 0.5. Four or five, and you're still not in line with with what your dope said you needed. Well, then you can start playing with your um, with your bullet speed ever so slightly, but but don't go crazy with it either. You know, the bullet speed is one of those things that if you got a good chronograph, that's probably the most accurate thing that you have. So, scope height first, ballistic coefficient second, and then of course the messing with the bullet speed last. Now, to go a couple steps further with this. Hornady went and introduced the Fordoff program that has this coaxial form factor. And basically, it's a little slide bar drag rule that allows you to, they use one as standard. And if your dope is running a little high or a little low at 1,000 yards, you can move this slide rule left and right to bring that point of impact up or down inside the program to get it to match what you actually needed. So, for example, you go out and you shoot at 1,000 yards and you're half a mil high. You put all your general information in there and you're shooting over the target well, you can then go in and play with the program and keep modifying that, that form factor until your click chart actually says what you need to score center hit out there. So you keep moving that until it brings your dope down that half a mil. So let's just say, for example, you needed eight mils to make a thousand yard shot, but the program was saying 8.5 and you're shooting over top. So you're going to drag that bar over until your dope at eight mills matches your Ford off program at eight mils and then you leave that form factor alone and you're good to go i've been playing with this program for a couple of years and i am not an expert expert in this field been around a while and shooting a long time but there's probably stuff that goes on behind the scenes developing these programs that i'm sure i don't know but i i've had issues with this uh, just changing on a daily basis, just like all the other programs where, you know, I, I followed the instructions, got the Ford off program set to my thousand yard dope. I would go in and, you know, change the, the barometric pressure for the new place that I'm shooting and, and it's off an awful lot. Now this is new. This is a couple of years ago playing with it. And I'm sure like everything, it's getting better over time. So I'm not going to say that, Hey, skip the harder part the way that we did at old school to get real dope for your rifle and just go to the Ford off program because it's easier. It, it is, but there's a trade off to that. I, you know, I, I'm not a hundred percent certain that I'm going to go flying down the mountain on this thing at a hundred mile an hour and depend on it, you know, with my life. I, I'm not 100% confident in it yet, I guess would be the statement. So I think the industry itself was moving forward and I'm really excited about that part of it. I don't think it's perfect yet, so I still think that there's some small things that we have to do. I am excited for this older program to come out. Um, we are on a waiting list to get one here, and actually I'm sort of pushing a little bit. I hope to maybe even get a chance to go out at their facility and get a hands-on demonstration, and let's see if she works. If this really does work, we're going to purchase one for the school here and let students come in and and sort of fast track getting the dope for the rifle by shooting over the system itself. It's a pretty good investment. It's um I don't know what they're saying now two three four thousand uh, dollars, but if it works and it's something that we can use here to help the students get really good work and do for the rifle efficiently, that would be really nice nice asset for us here. So we're excited to try it out. All right, so we we talked about dope and trying to adjust. I hope it makes sense on the podcast, I hope you're able to follow along. It, it, it can be even confusing in a classroom trying to explain to, you know, even just a class when breaking down on how we adjust for these things. But I guess the bottom line is, is you've got to get really good working dope for your rifle. I actually tie mine to my rifle, like I said before. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things, once you have it, you're just modifying it for conditions at that point. So it's, it's not hard to keep running true at that. Um, but it just takes a little work on the front end. 
Now, when it comes to, you know, getting dope for your rifle, I only have a couple rifles that I shoot on a regular basis, probably three at best. And probably the biggest reason for that isn't that I, I don't like lots of rifles. Um, I'd love to have a whole safe full of them. It's just that it's a lot of work to get true working dope for your rifle. They're definitely a high maintenance relationship when you get a new one on the line and you're getting all the bugs worked out and you're getting it to where you can run it at distance efficiently and then to keep it running in that condition. Uh, it's it's actually a fair amount of work. So, you know, to have seven or eight of them or, or nine of them, I'm trying to keep running true at one time would just be a little bit overwhelming for me personally. So I'm usually running two rifles, you know, one trainer and one one actual match gun quite a lot. And then I might have one I'm playing with for whatever reason. Like, for example, we just finished up to 6.5 PRC. So we're out shooting that a lot. I guess, you know, when you're getting this dope, you'll, you'll realize it sort of is a lot of work. It's worth it. I mean, it definitely gives you confidence that the gun's running true because the opposite is this. And I've watched this a thousand times. You get out on the firing line and you shoot and where did it go? Because it didn't hit the target. And, you know, you can watch a shooter slowly start to either melt. You fire a couple more rounds and their dope isn't on. Nobody's seeing anything. Or they, they look like that dog chasing their tail going and spinning faster and faster and faster and faster until eventually, you know, the saliva's running out the corner of their mouth and they're, they've just totally lost their mind. So I call it shooter's insanity. Yeah, I would rather just get to work and do it for my gun and have confidence in it than to play that game because I've watched that played too many times. And it, honestly, it doesn't look like fun to me. So we have our shooting schools. They are going on full bore right now. Uh, once we get these things finished up, I really am trying to get a couple more uh, people in for interviews. And one of them I'm excited to get on here is Bruce. We just got to get our schedules put together. If you guys can think of anything or anyone you would like us to bring us on to the podcast and, and if you think of any questions you would like us to ask, please let us know. I know as we're traveling around here shortly, uh, we plan on doing more remote podcasts and getting a chance to talk to people in the industry and ask them questions you know, on the air that we would like to ask and sort of share their responses with you. So we're looking forward to that as well. So guys, my name is Jamie Dotson of Wolf Precision, and we really do want to thank you for spending the time and joining us. And you're listening to the Long Range Shooting and Custom Rifle Building Podcast. Mm-hmm.